that's the really weird thing for me because I, I was thinking because I, I uh, you know, I have like an anxiety disorder and like stuff like that. Okay. So I was thinking I was going to be really nervous and like really scared like my first fight. But like it, it just never really happened. Like I obviously got nervous. Like you don't you don't ever go into a fight feeling normal. That would be honestly pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I'd be more worried if I was feeling normal. But uh, yeah, like I, I remember waiting for it because my jujitsu competitions I usually get pretty nervous uh but like it just never happened and it was like the day before my fight and I'm like okay like where is it yeah. <laughs> I was like all right it's probably it's probably gonna be tomorrow when it's actually fight day and then the next day comes and I'm just like still nothing and I'm like well when I walk to the ring definitely it's gonna kick in and then no it's just a general level of anxiety and it's actually it's nice it makes things easier <laughs> Hayden, you're an MMA fighter based out here in Coeur d'Alene, man. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I like to, yeah, absolutely, man. I love to go back with my guests. Like, where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? Yeah, so I grew up uh, in Delaware, okay. which I'm sure you don't get a whole lot of people from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was born in Wilmington, Delaware, and then we went to like PA. I, uh, I was there till first grade, and then my parents separated. And we moved back to Delaware. And then I, I pretty much was from there from first grade all the way through high school. And then uh, eventually I came out here. Gotcha. Yeah. What, what drew you out to Coeur d'Alene? So I, I have PTSD okay. and uh, I struggled with it for most of my life. Okay. And uh, I, went, I came out here for a program, actually. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I, I was in this program. It was called Intercept. I, I was in it for about... Uh, a year maybe a little under a year and uh they took us to this gym to work out um uh 360 fitness yeah and I, I started seeing these posters for this mma fighter coming in named pablo the hurricane alfonso i was just like and i always wanted to train because you know like i uh with ptsd i kind of i'm hyper hyper vigilant okay so i always feel like something's about to happen sure and uh so self-defense was always a big thing for me, not only to protect myself, but like other people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Pablo ended up coming to the gym. I, I came into a class one day and I, I just loved it. And so when it, I left the program, I, I decided to stay and keep training with Pablo because I, I liked him as a coach. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. been working with Pablo. I saw photos of like with you and Craig and Jordan, man. Yeah. I mean, way back since the fitness 360 days, obviously they have their own gyms now, man. Uh, is that yeah. when you started training in jujitsu then at that time and, and started getting into tournaments at that time too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I had taken like one jujitsu class before in Delaware, which was like the only jujitsu gym for miles. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I took like one class, but I, I had a lot of mental health things going on then so then I got really depressed and I stopped going there so this was my first one that I really started and I really stuck with mm. and I, I think I was Pablo's second or third student um and yeah I, I I started with Pablo Craig and Jordan were like the main people oh and Caleb uh Reagan another one of my training partners so it was just us yeah and uh it was actually really nice because like getting the role since there wasn't that many students since Pablo had just started, I got to roll with Pablo a lot, which allowed me to get good quickly, which I did not think I was going to get good. I remember my first jujitsu class, like he had to keep showing me everything. And I was just like, yeah, I'm probably not going to be good at this, but I, I, was, I decided to keep going. Cause I was like, I'll, I'll probably be able to like, you know, like if someone like someone who doesn't train jujitsu like messes with me and I have to use it for self-defense, I'll be fine. I never thought I'd be able to like, get anyone that was actually good at jujitsu but yeah yeah surprisingly i don't know it just kind of clicked one day <laughs> okay man that's awesome now i mean you just had your first mma fight back junior uh june 11th there at proving grounds presented by warrior camp you fought daniel lloyd at one point when i was watching the video he kind of caught you in a choke for a brief moment but you got out and then were able to finish the fight via tko was there a moment in there when he had that grip on you that you thought he might get the finish or were you just waiting to kind of wait for him to loosen that grip yeah, no, I mean, I had already passed in the side control, so I knew 
the guillotine he was holding wasn't going to do anything. Yeah. And I, I, uh, he was holding it pretty tight. So I was basically just waiting to try to get my head out, out of there or at least get my arm out so yeah. I can, uh, Von Flute choke him if he kept it. Yeah. But, uh, I got my head out first before my arm. So then, yeah, I just transitioned, but I wasn't, nah, I wasn't worried about it. <laughs> Super smooth transition, man, to finish that fight. Congratulations on the debut, man. Yeah. Thank you. And I mean, like earlier this year, you actually broke your foot in training and we're not able to train for like six to eight weeks, man. Like how did that affect you mentally, man? Were you able, were you more hesitant to throw a kick at all during training when you got back or in the fight? No, honestly, I wasn't because that was my first MMA fight, but I also did a a Muay Thai smoker, like uh, literally right after my foot healed. Oh, nice. And uh, (laughs) because yeah, I, I had kicked an elbow and I was supposed to fight already. So then I was like, all right, I guess I have to wait. Cause I'm not going to fight with a broken foot. Not for my first one. If it was yeah. like something more serious, I might be like, mm, I'll still go for it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I let it heal. And then I just started training. I, I knew I had to be ready for it. So I was like, I, I tested it out with a few kicks. Everything felt good. I didn't feel any pain. So then I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. And then after that, I was just throwing kicks and yeah, everything was fine. I wasn't worried about that either. <laughs> nice, man. You know, in fighting, it's such a, a mental game as much as it is a physical game there. How do yeah. you train on the mental side of things, man? Yeah, that's that's the really weird thing for me because I, I was thinking because I, I uh, you know, I have like anxiety disorder and like stuff like that. Okay. So I was thinking I was going to be really nervous and like really scared like my first fight. But like it, it just never really happened. Like I obviously got nervous. Like you don't, you don't ever go into a fight feeling normal. That would be honestly pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I'd be more worried if I was feeling normal, but uh, yeah, like I, I remember waiting for it because my jujitsu competitions, I usually get pretty nervous, uh, but like it just never happened. And it was like the day before my fight and I'm like, okay, like where is it <laughs> yeah. i was like all right it's probably it's probably gonna be tomorrow when it's actually fight day and then the next day comes and i'm just like still nothing and i'm like well when i walk to the ring definitely it's gonna kick in and then no it's just a general level of anxiety and it's actually it's nice it makes things easier yeah part of me wonders if it's because like with like my ptsd i just feel like that way a lot anyways like that fight or flight like you know something's about to go down <laughs> kind of feeling so maybe i'm just used to it (laughs) gotcha i mean and like i said you train out there at warrior camp with pablo and rose and they're just amazing people but and like so many warriors come out of that gym like terrence mckinney josh Reddinghouse, like you said daniel swain michael sears so many more man how much confidence does that give you heading into the cage you know having come trained from you know warrior camp and being with pablo and all those warriors oh it gives so much confidence i can't even really fully explain it yeah like uh and just like all those guys you mentioned like just being able to train with them like those top tier guys and like being able to you know being able to survive rounds with them like when you're grappling and you know just sparring with them you learn so much and uh terrence terrence has very heavy hands and when he hits you you (laughs) feel it so He's definitely helped me learn how to take a punch. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Daniel Swain's wizard on the ground with jiu-jitsu. Uh, yeah. Josh Reddinghouse, great pressure fighter. Uh, Mikey Sierra, he's another one I train with a lot. They're all just really, really good. And, it, yeah, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. It's, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you on that, man. And one of the things you have in your, your Instagram on your profile there, it says all or nothing. What does all or nothing mean to you, man? Pretty much it means like if I'm going to do something like this, something my, my dad actually like Craig came up with the saying, I'm pretty sure, but it it resonated with me too. Cause like my dad always told me when I was younger, like, if you're going to do something, you either put all your effort into it or just don't do it at all. Cause that's just how he raised me. And, uh, that, uh, that definitely translates to MMA. Like I, if I, I, I train like six days a week, two to three times a day besides Friday, cause it's 10 round sparring. And then Saturday it's once, but it's, it's a long, like three to four hours. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, I, I if I, I want to be an MMA fighter and I want to be successful at it. So I I'm giving it everything I got. And yeah, if I, if I'm start slacking, then I, I would stop, but I, I don't see myself doing that. I'm very motivated and I, I can see myself going very far in this uh, profession for sure. 
Nice. Now, I mean, obviously, it sounds like the goal is to go pro. Do you have a kind of an end date or a goal date in that mind uh, to, to go pro there? Yeah, so I'm trying to fight a lot this year. Okay. So I'm hoping either this year or next year to go pro. Because okay. I'm just going to fight a lot, train a lot, and I think I'll be ready soon for sure. I've got these things called pod decks. They're essentially just random questions. And uh, we'll pull one out here and see how it goes here. Okay, sounds good. Uh, this one says, would you rather go 30 days without your phone or your entire life without dessert? Oh, 30 days without my phone. I can't, I can't, I can't give up dessert. That's awesome. That'd be depressing. How am I supposed to celebrate after my fights after I'm done cutting weight? <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> that'd, oh, that'd be so sad. <laughs> For sure, dude. <laughs> what, who's a favorite band or favorite uh, type of music that you like, man? Or what's a favorite type of music that you like? Um, my, uh. My tastes have really shifted a lot. Okay. Because when I was younger, I was into like, like, uh, so I started off with like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Nice. And then we got into like rap and like hardcore rap. And then like now I'm like so much different than when I was when I was younger. Like yeah. I'm so mellow now. Like I was really angry when I was younger. Okay. Now I'm just super mellow. So I don't listen to rap as much. But I actually really like like older music, like from the fifties and stuff, and even oh, nice. some classical stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That's that sounds to be what I listen to nowadays. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, I grew up like at my grandma's house. She basically raised me, and so I'd be at her house, and I'd be down in the basement putting Elvis eight tracks into the eight track player, man. Oh, and so wow. <laughs> like, always loved Elvis since like the early days, man. So I'm a big fan of, fan of Elvis there. Uh, this is more of a question about Pablo and Rose because you know them so well. Who wins in a game of Monopoly between those two? Oh, that's a that's a hard question. Um. I'm going to say Rose. I'm sorry, Pablo. I, I, I don't mean to throw you down like this, but I, I'm going to have to say Rose. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Dude, I also <laughs> wanted to just give you an opportunity to just give a shout out to coaches, teammates, sponsors, man, anything like that. Dude, the camera's all yours, bro. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, uh, definitely shout out to Pablo and Rose. Uh, thank you guys for everything. Uh, shout out to Daniel Swain, Josh Reddinghouse, Terrence McKinney, Mikey Sierra, everyone cody everybody i train with pretty much uh you guys are great you're the reason i'm getting good and uh i appreciate everything thanks for my mom all my family for support friends for support thanks everybody <laughs> man hayden this is such an honor to have you on the show man I'm, I'm pumped to see you back in the cage and watch your journey man and yeah no definitely and thank you for having me on what's going on thank you so much for watching the show i really appreciate it hey i just wanted to do a quick introduction if you've not seen my show or you don't know the services that i offer i wanted to drop them to you right now one i do voiceover work so if you're looking for a voiceover a person to cover your motivational videos or maybe it's kickstarter videos or whatever it is let me know i'm more than happy to help you out there I also work with brands on brand and product videos. So they'll send me their products to do reviews or box openings. Let me know. I'd love to work with you on your product as well and hope you get that product out there. I also love to be able to share my story. So if I can make an impact on one person at your next speaking engagement, let me know. I love to talk about my story. I love to talk about how our past does not define our future and morning routines and being consistent, how to be around those successful people that are just gonna lift you up. Let's chat about having me speak at your next event. Let's make it happen. Again, thank you so much for checking out this show. Check out ericgallonmedia.com. Really appreciate your time. Have an awesome day.